We're just two days away from England's final game in the group, and we're raring to go. Look who's joined us for a little bit of Sunday lunch and a spot of darts. And this is Lions Den with MS Food. Boom, boom. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Welcome back to Lions Den with MS Food. I'm delighted to say I'm joined by the main man, King of Liverpool. It's the one and only Connor Cody. How you doing, brother? All right, mate. How are you? Not too bad. Listen, we Good got part. we got a pack show today. We've got a lot of stuff. I'm gonna give you a little blast from the past. Right, we've got a lot <laughs> to get through, so I won't I won't talk too much. And listen, guys, we want you to get involved in as much as possible. Lions Den is the hashtag to use if you want to get your questions in for Connor. If you want to just send in your, your messages of love and support, only two days away from the big game, the final game of the group, so make sure you do this ASAP. Now, Connor, back to football, brother. Yeah. Talk to me. A little rest and recovery day yesterday. Yeah. Training hard. What's it? Everyone looking sharp before the game? Yeah, it's great. It's great. And you know, the best thing about it is, mate, that you've got games coming thick and fast. Do you know what I mean? There's nothing where I say nothing worse sometimes. Some of the football players, we yeah. love doing what we do every day. Do you know what I mean? But, when you've got games coming thick and fast and yeah. you know where we're at, we're at World Cup, it's the biggest stage in the world and it's kind of, you get one game and the best thing yeah, about yeah. it is another game in a few days. So can't wait for it, lads are recovering really well and training's really good as well, so yeah, it's looking good. Okay, well, you know, I like to start the show off on a, a positive light. Yeah. Okay, I'm not sure you might feel that way after listening to this because every, every, every day we have, like, you know, a player asked the following player a little question. Right. We had Hendo on yesterday. Yeah. Let's have a look at this. <laughs> Connor, we're all England here, but what I really want to know is, are you blue or red? <laughs> he was like, he's going to hate this. He's like, going to be Do you know sweat. what? It's so poor for him because we have banter all the time here. Yeah. Obviously, I'm playing at Everton and different things, and he knows, he knows deep down. So yeah. for him to come out there and ask that question, yeah. is that I'm blue? Of course I'm blue. Yeah. Of course I'm blue. Well, that was a shadow of doubt. And for him to say that, <laughs> do you know what? I'm going to go back there in a minute, I'll sit down, <laughs> have a coffee with him, and I'll give him a bit because that's nowhere near good enough from the big fella. But blue all day long, mate, yeah. OK, that's all right. You know, I was going to say, because going home for Christmas, we're coming up to Christmas, it could be an awkward yeah, dinner no, table. No, 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 blue all day long, mate. And he knows that. <laughs> so stitching me up like that is bang out of order. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair play. And listen, one of, that, one, of, one of the kind of the, the things that we like to do, obviously, is ask the questions, and there's always a bit of banter flowing around. I think yeah. it shows a, a bit of the camaraderie in the team and, and kind of the energy and kind of togetherness of the squad. That you, you can ask those tough questions, you know, and expect a, expect a nice answer, an honest <laughs> answer, I hope. Uh, but I want to know, because you're the man on the inside, I, I want to know a few things about the mm. goings on in camp. Okay, okay. so I want to get the inside scoop. So, first of all, I want to ask you, like, who's, who's the dad of the group? Eh. Uh, do you know what? We've got, a, we've got a few. We've got some real good experienced lads. Lads yeah. who kind of get on well with everybody. I think that's what's so good about the camp, if I'm being honest with you. Everybody kind of gets on well with everybody. There's no real clicks. Uh, I think if you look at the experienced players, and I don't mean this to sound bad because yeah, they're a little yeah, bit older. Yeah, yeah, and listen, yeah. they might give I you said a bit to of stick for I said that. experience is age now. That's yeah, what so I think lads will look at it and go, we talk about my age day and different things, but I'm not talking about Hendo and kind yeah. of how he leads and the example he sets and what he's like in training and driving people. I think he's a massive factor in it. And in terms of getting on with everybody in the group, I mean, he looks after Jude like there's no tomorrow. Do you know what I mean? Like he, he was chewing when he yeah. uh, when he got one less than Jude on the on the shark. Yeah, and, and and there's a, there's a few things that go on. Kind of there was something the other day when we were having dinner and we mentioned about obviously Jude's a young lad and yeah. listen, sometimes we forget that because he's so mature and he's okay. a fantastic footballer, such a mature lad. And kind of the other day he said something about his mum making his bed. <laughs> right, this is nowhere allowed. Talking Jude Bellingham here, one of the best players, young players in the world, whatever. And Hendo sat up at dinner. And he went, what? <laughs> and Jude went, yeah, my mum makes me bed. So it's nowhere near. So Hendo's bashing him. Bashing yeah, him. You've got to start yeah. me, you know, do you know what I mean? That sort of thing. So I'd say someone like Hendo walks yeah. is really good for kind of yeah. examples and setting an example and different yeah. things for people. But I'm not just talking about their age there, because they'll probably give me a bit of stick for yeah, that. But fair. I'd say them too. Kind okay. of, yeah, and honest. who's like the little brother of the group? Again, Bakayo. Yeah, Bakayo. Every day of the week. <laughs> Every day of the week. He's. He's such a positive fella. He's in with everybody. He knows everybody. He gets on dead well with yeah. everybody. Whenever you see him, he's got this big mm -hmm. smile on his face, and he's just loving life. 
And you yeah. see what he's doing on the pitch, listen, we can all yeah. see that. But kind of what he brings to this team off the pitch is massive, so I'd say Bukayo, yeah. I've heard some of the boys are like, Bukayo, you need to get like a sleeve or something, maybe some earrings, <laughs> whatever, just, just, you know, topping yourself yeah, up with no, it. I don't think, and, and you know what, that would take away his personality, yeah. wouldn't it? It'd take away everything about him, and listen, an incredible fella, but what he does around the camp and what he's like for everybody, yeah. really. Yeah. 100%. Who's, who's the most likely to be late for the bus? Oh, forget, we've had a few of them. Passport we've had a few of them. Yeah. Listen, there's too much of that. There's too much of that. Wow. I see, no, you're the, the dads of the group, and really. The lads, and the lads give a bit. Do you know what I mean? The yeah. lads give a bit about lateness. Trent's had a couple of ones. He's been late a couple of times. Uh, honestly, there's a few. There's yeah. a few, and we're kind of at the club. Do you know what I mean? Look, what's going on here? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? We need to be on our way and different things. So there's, there's a couple. Walks is a little bit for that, even not. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. There's a few, but uh, yeah, we try and keep on top of it. Yeah. Too busy playing basketball and darts. Yeah. That's it, mate. <laughs> there's that much going on there, so yeah, you say, can get like it looks that. It unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, you can get like that. Yeah. Who's got like the most unusual habit? Like you look around and go, is that, is that you do that every day? Oh, yeah. Whether it's food, whether it's how they get ready, whether it's in the changing room. Yeah, no, do you know what I'm going to go with, Dan? Listen, I love him to bits. I play with him at club level as well, Jordan yeah. Pickford. Yeah, yeah. On a match day and on the pitch, <laughs> <laughs> and listen, we, we speak about it to him all the time. He, he's a, listen, an incredible keeper, fantastic keeper. I'm lucky enough to play with him at Everton as well. But kind of, he's non-stop. On the pitch, he's not. He's yeah, 100 yeah. mile an hour, 100 yeah, yeah, mile an hour, 100 see, mile yeah. an hour. Even behind, like I, I play obviously in front of him, and he, I've got him behind me. But non-stop, you can hear him regarding anything. Could be someone on the right, someone on the left. Can't he's like, he's commenting this. on the you game. Gotta do that. You got to do this. You got picks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. Okay, no problem. But I love it. Do you yeah, mean because he's, he's so invested in the game, yeah, he's yeah. confident in the game. So I'd say picks just kind of for that. Yeah. Okay. Who's the Who's the funniest? Who's got the most bang? Oh, we've got we've got loads. We've got loads, and listen, it's it, it, it's a pleasure to be. To be around the lads and share sh 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 share moments with them. Uh, Endo's good. Yeah. Endo's fantastic. He's, he's a player you could sit in his company with for quite a while yeah. and, and kind of he's quite dry and off the cuff yeah, with, yeah. With, with his answers, do you know what I mean? And he's the most competitive man I've ever seen. He, he's brilliant. Bakayo's top draw. I could go through so many. Yeah, yeah. So, so many. Stones, he's. It's a good sign that you can just read yeah, them off. Yeah, it's Stones, he's top level. You sit in Stones, he's company and he, he speaks about certain things and I've had chats with him about Everton and different yeah, yeah. things. Don't but... Just a real, real funny guy. Yeah, I'll, I'll go John Stones, yeah. Go Stones, John yeah. Stones. He's underrated. Yeah. I feel yeah. like he's underrated. Like maybe the people don't know. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll go John Stones because, like I said, you can sit in his company and you'll, you, you'll laugh and he'll tell you things and he'll just be like, what are you going on about here? And, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I'd, I'd say Stones, yeah. All right, fair play. You know what we'll do? We'll get Stones on for like an hour-long podcast yeah, yeah. episode. We'll get you along as well. We'll, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll make a proper thing of just it. Just have right, a chat. Lines then extended. We'll, yeah, we'll make yeah, it happen. Lovely. Now, during the, during the Euros, um, Gareth's number two, Steve Holland, said you were the player of the tournament mm. for how you were off the pitch and how you acted at training, the kind of effort and the drive that you had in training as well. How nice is it, I guess, to, to hear that from someone like that in the coaching staff, even if you're maybe not getting as many minutes as you'd mm. like, but just to know that you're having that much of an effect around the camp? Yeah, it was huge. And it, it was a moment of pride, if I'm being honest with you, because you don't really expect that, like you said, that I never played as much as other lads or whatever it may be. So to hear something like that, Gives you a bit of a boost because yeah, yeah. it lets you know that kind of you're still doing things right. Because sometimes I think when you're not playing, it, it, it is tough because it yeah. gets you and you're desperate to play. You're desperate you're to play. You're desperate, of course, yeah, yeah. And, you, and you're desperate to play. And you're desperate to help the lads and you're desperate to help the team. I think so. To hear that for myself at the time, it was like it's kind of a little bit like yeah. that, that, that's top draw. Gives you a bit of a boost. But at the same time, I think we're all professional players. I think if you've got anybody here who kind of hasn't played so much. Up to now, I think they tell you the same thing. It's about personal pride. It's about pushing the lads as much as we possibly can because we've come to Qatar. We're here for one thing and one yeah. thing only, and that's that's to win as a win as a team and get as far as we can. So I think any lad would tell you the same thing. But to hear that, mate, was was top draw, yeah. No doubt. Now we've got we're talking about training a little bit. I wanted to just go through these. We've got like a few few highlights of you you in training here. I want to talk me through one of these. You can't because... have much of them, can you? Yeah, mate. Let's have a hey. top draw over you can't there. Can't have top much draw. of them. Go on. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Go! Hendo, you and Hendo around all the time. Look at this, what's the best mates? Go, Hendo, go! Oh, it's inches, it's, inch, it's inches there, by the way. Yeah, but I'm not the quickest anyway, so I don't mind that, to be fair. See, this, this, this is one that I um, actually felt a bit bad for you, because there's... Oh, yeah, oh, you're no, talking through that one. Yeah, you don't rub it though, do you? You carry, <laughs> carry on, do you know what I mean? You, know, you, don't, you just carry on. Yeah, no, that's... Do you know what, we do a lot of them sessions, and it helps massively, I think, for defenders, yeah. for myself. It helps massively, because, for one, you're playing against world-class players. Yeah, yeah. So you look at, I think it was Jack who was there, who was yeah. pulling back on different things. Phil, Rashi, H, yeah. you, you can reel them all off, Kayo. So you can reel all the players off. So for someone like me to kind of 
get that work in what we do and how we do it on the training pitch. It's top level. It's top level. The training yeah, is true. brilliant anyway, do you know what I mean? But that's top level, yeah. Yeah, and every time uh, we just speak to the boys, I say that the levels in training are going up and up every yeah. single day. So yeah. I can imagine exa exactly like mirrors what, you, what you're saying yeah. there. Now, was the, was the Wales game in 2020 where mm. you scored your first yeah. and only England goal? Yeah. Oh, is, it, is it too crazy to say we might be thinking, we might be seeing, dreaming? Of, of maybe getting a second against Wales. I'll tell you what, Cup. dreaming, dreaming, because you're always dreaming, you're always yeah. hoping, you always have them things. But going back to that kind of that night, it was kind of something that I've I've always dreamt of and more, if I'm being honest. Because kind of when Trips put it in, I remember it like it was yesterday. So yeah. It was one of the proudest moments of my life. If I'm being totally honest with you, then when Trips put it in, it landed on my toe. You kind of think, is this really happening? Yeah, yeah. And it's like kind of slow mo. Mm -hmm. Do you know I mean it's slow mo? Because for one, I'll be honest, I, ne I never actually thought I'd play for England. Yeah. To score for England and then. Kind of, I'm on 10 caps and yeah. I never thought I'd get one. So yeah. kind of where I'm at now is, it's the best feeling in the world. But that moment, I remember running off and kind of having a little bit of a laugh and I put my head <laughs> to the sky and I had a little bit of a laugh. Because at the time, like, I never went forward for, for Wolves, it was at the time. Yeah. I never went up for corners and different things and I kind of done it for England and scored. And what, was, what was your thought process again? I think, I just, just something come to me, I think well, this is my time. Yeah, well, not even that. Like, I was getting messages after the game from people, who, I was at Wolves at the time, from people at Wolves saying, what's going on? You never go up for us and you go up now and you score for yeah, England. Yeah. I'm just messaging about saying, you need to put me up now. <laughs> but it was kind of, yeah, it, it was surreal. It was surreal. And like I said, I remember running off because I don't score many yeah. and kind of just put my head to the sky and have a little bit of a chuckle as if, like, just score for England. Yeah. Just score for England. Like, that kind of moment will live me forever and it's something uh, I dreamt of a moment, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Now, on this show, we like to give, you know, give go a little blast from the past, give people some, some things to remember. You know, we go into yeah. the archives. Okay. <laughs> so I think, I think it's time, okay, because we've, we've got one of the Lion's Den family, one of the new members, Abby McCarthy, who's at a random location. I'm not going to tell you too much. Abby, how are you doing? <laughs> really good, thank you. Happy to have the call up, happy to be part of the Lion's Den family. And I've got quite the crew with me. I'm at somewhere very dear to Connor's heart. I'm at his childhood club, Rainford Rangers in St. Helens. Rainford Rangers, oh, make some it. noise for me. <laughs> That's it, share your charm. There's definitely some Connor fans. <laughs> It's all going on. I love it's it. It's all going on. So these guys, you guys were all playing a bit of a, a bit of a match earlier, and I, I can tell you now there are some ballers out there. There are some future Connor Codys that were on that pitch. But Connor, how old were you when you played here? Oh, I, I was a baby. I was a baby. Rayford Raiders was my first club, and it's kind of something that is always close to my heart. If I'm being honest with you, then. Listen, seeing all the kids there with, with the kit on is, is fantastic to see. The weather's a little bit different there than what it is here. I'll be honest, it's, <laughs> it's roasting and hot here, so I don't kind of uh, thank you for being there. But listen, no, in, incredible time in my life, if I'm being honest, in, in, in terms of playing for Rainford. I still speak to a lot of people there now as well. And listen, it's a pleasure to see you all. Keep playing, OK? Keep enjoying it. Jeez, what, 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 guess what your first memories of kind of going down to Rainford Rovers and playing? Yeah, it was something where... So I had a coach called Graham Fenny, and I went there at such a young age and kind of... Listen, I don't mean to sound like I was a good no, player can, or nothing. We can, we can play the sad music yeah, on yeah, it. No, 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 I don't mean to sound like I was a good But I played a couple of years older with kids yeah. who were older than me, and it was the best thing ever for me yeah. because it brought me on as a kid yeah, and as a player and doing that. But it was so, so good. Listen, the kit was the same, the same colour, yeah. same everything. And like I said, I had a coach called Graham Fenner who, who really pushed me and helped me. And then, listen, I've got such fond memories. And I go back whenever I can. So I've yeah. done a few like yeah, presentations for the kids and different things when you've given out trophies. So I try my best to get back when I can as well. But it's a pleasure to see them all, yeah. Now, Abby, you've actually got you've actually got a special guest over there at Rainford Rovers, haven't you? Absolutely, a very special guest, someone that Connor, I'm sure, will have a lot of love for. Part the way, boys. Let's bring him through. My new best mate and Connor's first coach and former chairman of Rainford Rangers. It's Graham Fenny. Hello, come on through. Come on through the big crowd. Hi, Connor. So uh, he needs to tell us the juice off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> right, tell us what, what Connor was like as a kid then, Graham. What Connor was like as a kid. Well, well, first of all, I've got to say, Connor was an absolute pleasure to coach for, for three years between the age of five and eight years of age. Absolute pleasure to, to, to coach. I, I, I loved every minute. Um, what, what was Connor like? Uh, well, I always tell the story that when I was coaching Connor, you see a photograph there of Connor oh, and, there and, he is. and Connor's. Uh, uh, the Neil, yeah, there he is. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, I, I always say that when I was coaching Connor, 
every session, after every session, I used to go home and, and speak to my wife, and I used to bore my wife, Jennifer, with, with uh, I kept saying, <laughs> Look, we've got a boy here at Rainford Rangers. I say, if he doesn't make a footballer, I don't know what it takes to be a footballer. Oh. I, I didn't actually say he would be a footballer, a professional <laughs> footballer, but I said, I just don't know what it takes. There was just something special about Connor Cody. That's amazing that, that you knew. So what were the kind of skills and attributes that you had that you like, you know what, this Connor Cody kid, he's a bit of a baller. What, one, of the, one of the things that I do remember about Connor uh, when I coached him was w when I gave any coaching instructions to Connor, he really listened. He, mm. he took it on board and you could see every time he just wanted to improve, improve, improve. Uh, that, 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 that's one big uh, thing about Connor. Yeah. And obviously, it's a, it's a pretty cold day here today, not quite like the, uh, the weather in Qatar. And yeah. you were saying that the Cody family were amazing as well. They'd come along in whether it was windy or raining or yeah. cold, and they were yeah. amazing too. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm forever thanking Connor's parents, Andy and Gail, uh, because they, they, they usually turned up, they're usually first at every session. They're usually the last ones to leave. The, the support from, from his parents was magnificent. And it's, so, it's such important, it's a message to all the parents here, uh, that parental support and parental guidance is, is, is very important in, in developing a footballer. And we so, were hearing just before how amazing Connor always is in training. He's known as a positive voice in the changing room as well. He's a leader in the squad. But was he always like that as a little kid? Was he that confident? Now for the surprise. <laughs> Connor was a very quiet boy, actually. W w w would you believe? He, he really was. Uh, very, very quiet, but, but very determined. I hope I'm saying the right things, Connor. <laughs> <laughs> you are. No, you are, Gray. Believe me, mate, you are. <laughs> and have you got to see uh, Connor much since the rain yeah, for days? Yeah, as, as Connor said, we, we've kept in touch. Uh, I've, I've obviously followed his progress through the Liverpool Academy, uh, uh, through his... Uh, uh, jobs at, at Sheffield United and, uh, and Wolverhampton Wonders, obviously. Uh, and, yeah, I, I still see him now because even Connor has a young boy in the Liverpool Academy, <gasps> Freddie, who's doing extremely well. OK, so, another yeah, Cody yeah. coming through, is there? <laughs> yeah, All right, right, we love right. to see it. Yeah. Um, and I, I heard through the grapevine that when Connor actually made his first debut for England, he texted you pretty soon after the final whistle, didn't he? That's right. Uh, within about an hour, we exchanged text messages after his England debut, and uh, he brought a tear to my eye because the text message was thanking me for ev everything I'd done in the past for him. So, yeah, I, I was in tears, I'll be honest. You know. oh, I'm sure uh, you're so proud of, 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 what, of what he's achieved. So what do you want to say to Connor? Here he is at his first World Cup. First World Cup, first World Cup. Hopefully not the last. Connor, That's I just, I, I just want to wish, <laughs> wish, wish you well. You know, I hope you get some game time. Uh, fingers crossed there. Um, I wish you well and wish all the other players well. Uh, if you really can bring it home, it'd be marvellous to bring the World Cup. Back, back to Rainford Rangers. That's uh, it. That, that'd be great, Connor. <laughs> yeah, we want that trophy on the fly, and then you've got to do a bit of a parade here at St Helens. Absolutely, Connor. Right. Anything that you want to say to Graham? <laughs> No, thank you for coming on, mate. Listen, it's a, it's, it's a real surprise for me to see you. A real surprise for me to see you. And listen, something we're, we're very close anyway, Gray, aren't we? And it's a pleasure to see all the kids kind of on the screen. And I can see they're all a bit cold. But listen, keep doing what you're doing, mate. And I'll see you all soon, OK? Yeah, see you soon, Connor. Yeah, good luck. OK, thank And you. as you can see, a lot see of great. keen you, kids mate. here, they are going to be grilling you <laughs> later on with some questions, Connor. So I hope you're ready. But for now, back to you guys in the studio. Incredible. It's so, it's so, it must be nice to take a kind of trip down memory lane now. Do you know what? It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's kind of something I mentioned when you started speaking, speaking to me about it then. I mentioned Graham and someone who I've kept in contact with over the years. And Listen, he's a fantastic person, brilliant person, someone who's helped me no matter what throughout my life, not just when I was a kid, but kind of throughout my life. And I've always stayed in contact. My mum and dad have always stayed in contact, yeah. as he just said. So to see the kids there and what he's give to grassroots, yeah. I can't tell you, do you know what I mean? Because Grassroots makes us all. We all play at a grassroots sure. team. The, the, a lot of us in this England squad now play at a grassroots team. And what he's gives to grassroots is top draw. So, yeah, it was, it, it was a proper surprise and something that fills me with pride, yeah. Excellent. And he only had a glowing <laughs> reference for you. So, absolutely incredible. And if you could, listen, if you, if you could bring the trophy home and take it down to <laughs> Rainford Rovers, I'm sure everyone would be happy. Now, the surprises keep coming here. We've got the guests flying in, right. OK? <laughs> so, we've got a World Cup winner in the building, OK? Yeah. So, I would like to welcome the one and only... Ben Stokes. <laughs> <That's> what <he's... laughs> Hello, mate. What is happening, brother? Uh, what's going on, boys? You good? 
not too bad. Now, listen, I, I, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not often I get to speak to a World Cup winner, yeah. T20 World Cup winner. Just first of all, congratulations, and, and talk me through kind of the moment and the, and the feeling of lifting that trophy, because you are Mr Clutch. I mean, listen, it's, it's outrageous. No, no, I wouldn't quite go that far, Josh, to be honest. Um, nah, but look, uh, that night in Australia at MCG was, um, was very, very special. The, um, the atmosphere was unbelievable, as, as you can imagine. You know, obviously playing Pakistan, who've got uh, unbelievable support all around the world. Um, so it was absolutely bouncing the whole night. But yeah, lifting that trophy at the end of a, of a long five weeks was, was something I'll never forget. No, that, Connor, are you a bit of a cricket fan? Or you... Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I don't. Uh, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't follow cricket too much, to be honest. But I can imagine kind of what we're feeling now in terms of you just mentioned five weeks there. Do you know what I mean? Five weeks. What we're feeling now is probably very similar to to being away like like yourself was. To be fair, mate, as well. Yeah. No, that not. But wait, wait, where are you calling in from? Uh, I'm mean, currently in Islamabad in Pakistan. We flew in here last night. We were actually we were in a camp in uh, UAE for a few days before we came out here. OK, nice, nice. Now, have you managed to watch any games on your travels? I know, obviously, it's tough. You're, you're, you're a very busy man. Have you managed to catch a few games? And are there any kind of England fans in the squad? Yeah, yeah, we watched the first two games, actually. The, um, the last one against USA was actually a late kickoff for us. Um, it was, a, what was it, 11 o'clock kickoff where we were in Abu Dhabi. So um, there was only the diehards who were truly there at the end. And whenever the uh, big tournaments <laughs> come, a, come along, you'll always see me there at the end. Um, but, yeah, now nah, we've... Um, We've got lots of football fans, and actually, most of the lads think that if they weren't professional cricketers, they'd be professional footballers, but they're, <laughs> they're pretty crap, to be honest, so <laughs> they should stick to cricket. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, heard, I've heard in some of the warm-ups when you're out on pitch, you know, you tend to like, kick a ball around, and there's, yeah, there's, there's mm. a few boys that, that think they've got a bit. Yeah, well, we actually used to... Name names, um, geez, name names. Well, we used to play football, like proper football in our warm-ups. It was a big thing, but then we had a few injuries, unfortunately, and a few lads actually missed, missed out on games. <laughs> so, yeah, we had, to, um, we had to pull the pin on that, but we play pig now, you know, um, and then whoever loses gets the, um, gets the old flicks on the forehead. Uh, so that's as far as our football goes. <laughs> on the forehead? Yeah, 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 flicks on the forehead. Um, we've got... We've actually got... We've actually got some decent footballers. Uh, Joss Butler's... Probably, well, they're definitely number one. Um, I reckon someone who, who rates himself as one of the best, but is by far, actually on a good day, average, <laughs> is Sam Billings. Um, <laughs> I would, I'll be putting myself in that sort of like top bracket. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm only saying that because everyone says I'm the worst footballer, so I hope they're all watching and hear me say that. <laughs> He's got to put himself in there yeah, coming yeah, on yeah. here. He's <laughs> got to. Self, self confidence Stokes, he absolutely yeah. love it. Now, yeah. I know you, like you, you boys are, are no strangers kind of tournament mentality. And I guess what advice would you, would you give each other kind of going into these big games in these kind of high pressure environments? Stokes, I'll, I'll put you on the spot there and ask you to give a, a bit of advice to Cody and then I'll flip it around. Um, I think. With the with tournaments and knockouts and, and things like that, for me and for the team, it's always about peaking at the right time. Um, you know, I think you know we we had a we had a little hiccup along along in our World Cup campaign against Ireland where they beat us at Melbourne, um, but we didn't let that you know disappointment affect us because actually you don't really have time to to almost let it affect you too much. You've just sort of got to move on and then come and prepare for the next game and. Um, towards the back end of the of the you know the group stages or the, and then the knockout periods is where you really want to be peaking and um, you know that's sort of how we like to go about it in these in these knockout state the competitions like you find yourselves in the World Cup. Yeah, I, I, I think for me, mate, I think you're spot on. I think he's he's absolutely bang on. I think it resonates with football as well. And I think it's something where kind of we speak a lot and we try and take the experience we had in the Euros, kind of and. Yeah. Stokes, he mentions peaking there. I think we look back to kind of the Germany game in the Euros and we go, yeah, we were at our level there. We were at our top level. That was us kind of where we were. And I kind of think what we spoke about a lot since we've been here is keeping calm. I think it's keeping calm. I think it's not kind of getting too high when you get a fantastic result like we did mm. against Iran and going, right, now we're going to go and do it. I don't think that's the point where we're at. And then it's also when you get a draw against USA, realising where we're at and kind of what we want to do and where we want to go and how we want to do it. So I think it's keeping calm a massive part of it and we have such experience kind of within, within the squad. I spoke to you Will as well in, in terms of his squad as well in kind of 
keeping calm and, and calling on them, them experience we've had in the past to, to keep calm and, like you said, try and hit your peak at the right time and when we need it. So I think that's a massive part for us as well, yeah. No, for sure. Now, a bit of a spicy game because it's, 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 it's a bit of a derby game, I guess, <laughs> uh, against Wales. How do you kind of go into that? Do you go into that just thinking it's any other country? Or, or is it like, because there is that kind of, that, that added element to it that you kind of go, oh, I'm going to approach it in a slightly different way. No, I, th I don't think you ever push in a slightly different way. I think that would be silly to do. I think as footballers and kind of any sport you're in, if I'm being honest with you, coming up against, if you want to call it a rival or whatever it may be, I think everybody understands and feels it's a little bit of a bigger game. Not, not a bigger game, but a game with a little yeah. bit of spice added to it. But I think us as a team, we, we look at it in, in terms of any other way. We go into the game again. I mentioned being calm, understanding what's in our hands and what we can do and how we can affect the game. And making sure we go in and play our way and improve. That's what we want to do throughout the whole tournament. Stokes, you just said there, you kind of want to get to a point where you're always improving. And what we want to do is improve on the USA game. So that's what we've got ahead of us. We understand the sort of game it is for the supporters and people involved, yeah, yeah. but we also understand what we need to do to go out and get a good result. Yeah, for sure. Now, Stokesy, I know you said, I think it was about two years ago, you said up until two years ago, you didn't really have a club. And then Spurs sent you a shirt, right? And you said, I'm a Spurs fan now. And Harry Kane actually tweeted you saying, come down to a game. First oh. question is, is could, have, could have picked, you know, could have picked the other club in North London. That would have been, <laughs> that would have been nice. Uh, <laughs> but if, if Connor sends you a shirt, will you switch allegiances to Everton? Well, if Connor sends me a shirt, that means I'll now have a shirt sent to me from Tottenham, uh, Newcastle, Arsenal. <laughs> Pierce Morgan sent me an Arsenal shirt when he found out that uh, Tottenham sent me one. You know, his alliance with Arsenal. That, that's a so, clang, isn't it? That's a isn't clang. It? I'll pick that one up later. Yeah. <laughs> so why not? Why, why, why not? Why not? Why not add Edison one to the... Um, I'll get you on, mate. Don't worry yeah, about that. Yeah. We'll get you make down. Sure, make sure it's got Cody on the back, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it makes sense. Now, Stokes, you may always appreciate you coming on. It's always a pleasure to speak to you, brother. Enjoy. Um, and we hope, we, we hope, listen, we hope the timing, I don't know, between Islamabad and, and here is, is too difficult, but I'm sure you'll be watching the game somehow. Nice one, brother. I appreciate you coming on. Thank you, mate. Oh, good, boys. Nice Cheers, you, lads. lads. All the best, Connor. Cheers, boys. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Cheers. Ta -da, mate. <laughs> Oh, that's, what a guy. Oh, top draw. Top yeah. draw. And you know what? Another, another the, fan. the surprises keep on coming. Surprises yeah. because I weren't expecting that at all, mate. So, no, brilliant now. That's yeah, brilliant. This is what we do online. Yeah. Yeah. This is all my idea, by the way, guys. <laughs> it's just, it's, just, it's just twirling around in yeah, here. Right? Make yeah. a decent show. Yeah. But, like, I, I want to go back to Rainford Rovers, OK? But before mm. that, OK, I think it's time to get a few more fans in, OK? OK. Because the fans are coming in. They're writing, using the hashtag lines then. Yeah. They're on it, OK? So this... His fans ask questions. Okay. <laughs> what is happening, guys? Are we okay? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Um, Lek, I want to come to you first of all. I know you've got a good question. Um, what is it? Uh, and feel free to ask it to Connor. Hi, Connor. Hope you're doing well with us. Oh, I love it. Top draw. I like the shirts in the background as well. <laughs> um, I'm a defender at school and also an Everton player, so what top tips do you have on being a defender? Oh, I love that question. It's a fantastic question. Uh, what top tips? Uh, I think the big one is to use your mouth and to communicate, if I'm being honest with you. I think a lot of people now and a lot of young players don't kind of like to do it, aren't brought up with doing that. And I think it will help you loads being a defender to be able to communicate and to be able to read the game. I think it's a big part of it because as a defender, you see absolutely everything in front of you. You have players in front of you, you have the, uh, the team who you're facing against in front of you. And I think it's so important to read the game. So I think a massive part of it for me is communication and then also an ability to read the game as well. So fantastic question. Thank you for that. Great question, like I really, really appreciate that. Amazing. Now we're going to go to Harvey, who's in Oxford. What's your question for Connor? What is your favourite thing to do outside of football? Ooh, lovely to speak to you first off, Harvey. Uh, I think for me, listen, I'm, I'm a massive football fan, first and foremost. So when I'm kind of not playing football, I'm probably watching football. And it might sound a bit boring now but I'm a huge football fan. I think a big thing for me is kind of spending time with my wife and my children. I have three boys myself, and 
I'm the same again. I'm, I'm taking them to football and different things, but I think spending time with them outside of football is a massive part of it. I am a fan of rugby league as well, because I'm from St. Helens originally, so I watch a lot of rugby league, but I think the most thing, the, the biggest thing I do outside of football is, is spending time with, with Amy, my wife, and my three children, mate. So, yeah, so I'd probably say that. Amazing question, amazing answer. Cheers, matey. Now, last but not least is Tommy, who's actually a, a massive toffee. Okay. Okay, so I'm sure he's going to have a great question for you. Yes. But he's also here uh, representing the Outside Society, as okay. uh, Outside Society and the FA have kind of come together during the World Cup period to, oh, to raise awareness yeah. around dementia and kind of help any England fans or, or fans maybe struggling uh, with their memory during the World Cup, se World Cup season. So, uh, Tommy, pleasure to have you on board. What's your question for Connor? That my question for Conrad is, well, fantastic to have you had everything in the first place, but rotation of the squad is going to be vital given the heat conditions and the number of games the players will actually play. How do you keep your concentration if you're one of the players on the bench? And will it help you having Jordan Pickford behind you when you play as he knows your game and you know his? First off, it's lovely to meet you, Tommy. Hello. Lovely to meet you, mate. And it's, a, it, it, it's a great question, mate, yeah. In terms of having picks behind me, it's huge. It's huge because kind of having that understanding kind of at Everton every single week, we all see, you see first and mate, what he does for Everton and how big he is for Everton. So kind of understanding how he wants to play and what he does at club level, first and foremost, is fantastic. But then obviously seeing him here and seeing, how, seeing his stature within the England team and kind of having him behind me and understanding his game is huge. I think keeping concentration, I think that's the minimum we should have yeah. as England players. We're professionals, we're football players, we're here for one thing and... That's to try and get as far as we possibly can in this con competition. So I think if I was to sit here now and say it's hard to keep concentration, I'd be, I'd be a little bit silly because we're professional footballers and that's got to be the minimum we have to try and get as far as we can in this competition. So it's not a hard thing at all because we're so invested in what we want to do and so focused is that we've got to keep that as a minimum, mate. But, yeah, it's a, it, it's a great question, Tom. Thanks for that. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much, guys. It's always a pleasure to speak to the fans. <laughs> All fantastic questions. Enjoy it. I hope you enjoy the game against Wales. See you later, See guys. See you later, everyone. <laughs> Perfect. That's the last one. Yeah. It's, it's always nice to kind of have that connection with the fans and kind of go, because mm. I guess it kind of bring, brings them here because we, we are far away here in yeah. Qatar. So it's, it's nice to kind of build that link. Now, talking of links, we're actually going to go back to Rainford Rovers because some of those boisterous fans and those boisterous mm. players have got a few questions for you. OK. So let's go let's back go, to Abby. Mate. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Hi, guys. Yeah, this lively lot have definitely been keeping me entertained. I've got Max, Charlie, Jaden and Joseph ready to ask you some questions, Connor. Are you ready? As ready as you'll ever be. Of course I am. Let's go. I've been looking forward to it. <laughs> All right, then. Let's go. So, Max, your questions first. Who's your favourite friend in the England football team? Ooh, that's a good one. Ooh. Uh, my favourite friend, I've got quite a few. We've got quite a few. We have... So, first, first off, I, I'm real good friends with a lad who's not here at the minute, Tyrone Mings, who, who I've got really close to playing with England. But I think kind of being in this camp, I've, I'm, I, I'm very close to Eric Dyer. Really close to Eric Dyer. He's someone who I spend a lot of time with. I know of him before anyway because I played with him for England quite a lot of times and I'm really close with him and we play a game called Parch Easy on the iPad, right? On the iPad where we've got to flick things, it's a bit like Ludo and there's a few of us who play, me, Jordan Henderson, Trent and Aaron Ramsdale. So I'd probably say one of them five I've just mentioned but listen, we're all really close as well, so. Five best mates, you can really feel the love in this England team, I love it. And Charlie, you're <laughs> up next, what's your question? Did you always want to be a football player? Oh, great question. I like how you asked it as well. Very <laughs> firm there, mate. I like that. Uh, yes, I did. Ever since I was your age, playing for Rainford, that was something I always wanted to do. I listened to my coaches all the time and made sure I listened, but it's something I've always wanted to do all my life. I've looked at football players before me who have kind of played and had my own heroes. So that's always kind of pushed me to, to try and get to where I am today. So keep on training hard, mate, and playing well, OK? They're on it, they're on it. Jaden's been here cheering on the guys. And what's Good. your question, Jaden? Uh, who surprised you the most in this World Cup, Connor? Ooh, yeah, who's a bit of a baller Ooh, also a to win Jaden some points. He's a big Everton fan. He's playing it down, but he's a huge fan. Love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. First, first and foremost, I love that he's an Everton fan. That's a, bit, that's, a, that's a big one, so we'll talk about that. But 
The one that surprised me the most, and I'll be honest, I loved watching them the other day, and I know they've been beat today, I think it was today, yeah. but I loved the first game against Germany. I loved watching Japan. I thought they were fantastic. I thought they were absolutely brilliant. I loved watching them, I loved watching the game, and kind of how they were a team and how they stuck together, so... And I'm a bit of a football freak, really, so I look at it in different ways, but Japan for me, yeah, in the first game against Germany. And, Jaden, anything else you want to say to your, your favourite Everton player? I love you so much, Connor. So happy you've signed. And now you're the right <laughs> side of the flipping field. Hey, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, my mate. Hopefully we can get it sorted. Top man. <laughs> and, Joseph, what was your question? Waiting patiently at the end there. What was your favourite memory about Wainford Rangers? Ooh, Ooh great question. Uh, great, great question. Listen, I have loads. I have absolutely loads. I have... I was lucky enough to, to work under Graham, who you've seen before. Well, work under him, say work under him, but play for Graham and him help me as a coach. I think the biggest memory, we used to play, I always remember it, we used to play in a, in a little league, in Wigan it was, and we played there. I think we ended up winning it, winning the league, but playing in that league, going down every single weekend with my dad, and my dad taking me down there with that same kit you've got on now, was a real, real good memory of mine. So I'd say playing for Graham and then also playing in that league as well. These boys have used a lot of energy today, so I'm going to let them go inside and get warm. But thank you so much for your amazing questions. And back to you two. Thank you, boys. Incredible. Thank you, Abby, for coming on. Oh, it's nice. I just think the good memories going back, back down oh, to Rainbow it, Road. It, it, it's so good. It's so good, mate. And it's something where, like I said, it, it brings back memories, it floods mm. back, and it's kind of... Like I said, I try my best to get down there whenever yeah. I can now, even when Graham asked me to do certain things or whatever it may be. I'll try my best to get down because the great people involved with it, yeah. For sure. Now... This part of the show is where it gets very, very serious. This right. is sharpshooters, OK? Yeah. Nine players have been before you. Yeah. Where do you think you're going to come? Listen, I'm not, I'm not somebody who kind of says I'm going to go and smash it. Let's, yeah. we'll, we'll see how we go. It's a tough one. I've seen the boys do it, if I'm being honest. So I think a few of the lads, it's, it's catching on now a little bit. Yeah. So lads want to kind of get to the top. You know yeah. what? You know what, like, you, yeah. yourself, mate. So I want to have a go. I don't know who's top. Who's top? Rammers? Rammers is top. Yeah, in so Ra Rammers come back, actually, and told all the boys he was top because he's, <laughs> do you know what I mean? The lads are getting a bit competitive now. So I'll have a go. Yeah, all I'll right, go. OK, Let's fair play. Well, listen, while we get over there, I want to show you guys the highlights of what's happened in Sharpshooters because it's been intense. <laughs> it's been fantastic. And although Connor's playing it down, He's had a bit of a practice, so enjoy the highlights, and we're going to head over there. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one. Yes, Straight into ten. ten. What's going? Mm, oh, this is I think these are some nice starts over here. Yeah. You've got to go for the big. Uh, it's 20, so lucky. 20, 20, you've got to go for 40. the forty, but do not hit the keeper's arm. Oh, and a twenty. Mace, you're lying to me. Yeah. Oh, he's hit the forty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the 40, okay, now you can go for every other target. I played Good, you. In the one, perfect. This is technique. Oh, wow, there was, that's some frightening arrows there, by the way. Four, go, no, go, no, go, you go, said unlimited. Bro, 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 I got a 20, throw one more, you got one more. You know what? You know what? 85, 90, 91. 91. I have to say, you said you were going to the top of the leaderboard. I did. And you I'm did. I'm so disappointed in that lie. one there. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Sharp Shoes. You've just missed Con having a real Balotelli moment yeah. with a bag, but now it's proper scouts. Oh, it's like proper it. scouts with a crossbody bag. It's looking yeah. well. <laughs> Lions then official, right? It's going to sell out in Liverpool, I can tell already. <laughs> now, the leaderboard's intense. Yeah. Okay, the leaderboard's intense. At the bottom of the leaderboard, uh, we have Raheem Sterling popping Shock. up the base. Shock. 31. No Shock. surprises yeah, yeah, there. Yeah. Callum Wilson, I thought, might give mm. a little more. Mm -hmm. With a 65, it's not a bad score. Okay. We obviously had the three in the... You know, the first three shows was 66. It was... Okay. Something, something special was going on. Yeah. Hendo's... That's a shock, them two have got the same now, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know I mean? yeah. do the same, everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they yeah. just joined at the hip. Yeah. Hendo was, was absolutely gutted. Distraught yeah. that he got one less yeah. than Jude. Yeah. And obviously Ramsdale came in and was... 91. was It was a special performance. 91's good, isn't it? 91's fantastic. Out of yeah, a okay. Possible score of 100 now. Okay. Come over here and I'll teach you how it works. Yeah. Okay, you already know because you yeah. have had a bit of a no, practice. No, no, yeah. no, don't okay, tell sorry. people I've done. <laughs> if you hit every single inner circle, mm. you can get 100. Okay, you have 30 seconds to throw unlimited darts, but you can only hit each target once. Okay, okay, so if you hit the one, you can't then go back and get the five. Go for glory for the 40 because you're going to yeah. need that to be top of the leaderboard. Yeah. If you hit the keeper's arm, keeper saves it, game's done, you're back to zero. Back to zero? And the game's finished. Oh, the game's finished? The game's finished and you're right, at okay. zero. Okay. You do okay. not want to be going back, telling the boys, 
Oh, oh, yeah, no, no, it was good. It was going well. No, it was going well, that. and then I hit the keeper's no, arm. No, I don't need that. No? I don't need that. All right. Well, okay. you are right, yeah. So no, me, it's okay. Let so, me get real official. What's that? Yeah, well, you'll find out. Oh, go on. Let me on, the black, on the black spot there, though. You've just put that there. No, no, on the black spot. You know what? You can't I'm change it. I'm the ref. You can't change It's not even straight. Not even straight. Have I got a hit all around there to hit the 40, or can I go straight for the you 40? You can go straight for the 40, but that doesn't make the show very fun, does it? And that's a yellow card for descent, by the way. No. <laughs> okay, I'm going to write your name down. No, but if I go for the 40, it's not game over, is it? No, it's not game over. No, I can just keep on going for the 40, can't I? If you miss it, though... Hope Listen, you're not listening to the rules. Yeah, if Listen, I hit it, but I won't hit the end. If you, hit the, if you hit the 40, you can't then keep going back to the 40. You can only hit it once. Oh, you can only hit the 40 once? You can only hit each target one time. Oh. We've, we've, only, we've, only, we've, we've only had nine people do it. Jesus. Oh, right, right, come on then. Your 30 seconds yeah. starts on my whistle. OK? Hang on, you're going to 3, 2, 1? Yeah. 3, 2... <laughs> what is going on here? It's absolute shambles, but it is good darts. You've got the 5 and the 10. And another 10. It's beautiful. All right, straight in the five. This is not bad darts. A little bit loose there, a little bit loose. You're better than that. You can't keep going back for it because you get the five. I told you the rules. Now is the 40. Now is where it... Oh, we've got it red on, like 15. No, you only hit each target once. God, you've got 15 seconds in the 40. That is the game done. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> abuse the rules <laughs> that I explained to you seven times. I didn't abuse the rules. You told me. I've gone blue, so I never hit the red. And then I hit the blue and the red. Just because the middle is worth more, it's the same target, Connor. So what have I got? What's the score? Okay, let's come find out. Score, let's come we? find out. Do you know what right. I mean? I'm going to give you the five there, even though you've, your behaviour on this of show course. has been abysmal. OK, so that's a five. Add a ten, that's 15. Add another ten, that's 25. We'll add the 40, that's 65. Yeah. You threw that dart first, so Who's it's that? 70. No, 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 no. It's no. clean no. in the middle. Uh, it's clean uh, in the middle. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Let's see, just see where that appears and then we'll go back to that. Let's we'll see if the score's higher. 70. That would be an 80. And that would be an 85. And a 95. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come Connor. on. Connor. It's 95. No, no, no. I don't know. Connor, I don't know what your old coach was saying about listening to the rules, being diligent, on top of the, playing on top the of game. The thing with the 10. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Uh, the control room in VAR is telling me it's 85. All right, let's go to the board. Let's go to the board. You you come stand there. That is shocking. <sighs> Honestly, it's shocking. So we have gone second. Listen, VAR decisions go against you. Sometimes it happens. Okay, we can take it up with. Don't mention VAR. VAR. Don't mention VAR. Man, no, no. Don't it's, mention it's, it. It's, we don't it's want to talk sticky, about it's VAR. It's a sticky subject. Here. Right. So your score, yeah, of 85, puts you second. Okay. We're going to get rid of that because that's destroying yeah. the board. It's a, it's a sensational score. Yeah, thank it's you a very sensational much. I'm score. gutted, though. You should be gutted, but guess what? What? It's, 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 you're qualified in the group. Yeah, I know, you're but it's, it's not enough. Not enough. We've got to go top. Ramos is top. I wanted to go top. Right, I not, think you killed not, me. Listen, we're not going to argue about this. Okay, okay we'll speak about go it after. Then. Yeah. Listen, you know what happens on this show? Yeah. Okay, we ask everyone who comes on to ask a question to the following guest. And tomorrow, we've got the one and only James Madison. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to put you on the spot right now, but Ooh. you need a question for James Madison. And guess what? The great news is we're back tomorrow around the same time, guys. Listen, everything's moving around here. It's around the same time. But, of course, we're live on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and all of your favourite social media platforms. Don't miss it. James Madison, Lions Den tomorrow. Connor, it's been a pleasure. Top man. Thanks, we'll see you, you next time.